Hi, I'm Martin DeMello of Common Word. I'm going to say a little bit about Common Word uh, and then um, tell you something about three of the books that we've most recently published. So Common Word began in 1977. It came out of the adult literacy movement uh, and it began as a, an enterprise really to publish working class writing, which there wasn't really very much available of. Um, since its beginnings, it's uh, expanded its uh, scope to include um, all marginalised voices. So we published working class writing, uh, writing by black writers, by queer writers, by disabled writers, by people who are refugees seeking asylum. So what we're interested in is the voices that are either neglected by the mainstream, excluded by the mainstream, or generally misrepresented by the mainstream. Uh, so as part of this, we um, work with writers uh, with their texts over a period of time to get them to the point where they're, they're publishable. Um, and then we uh, publish via our imprint, Crocus Books. So Crocus Books publishes um, anthologies of uh, fiction and poetry, single collections of poetry, single collections of uh, short fiction and novels. Um, so in terms of the, the imprint, it's been going for I think nearly 30 years now. So uh, three most recent uh, publications, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about each of them now um, and uh, a little bit about what I like about each of them. Um, so the first one is The Missing Husband by Vijay Medya. Um, so we've known Vijay for quite a few years. His uh, first novel uh, was The House of Subada, which was published a few years ago. Um, this is his second novel and his first foray into crime fiction. Um, it introduces the main character as P.I. Abe Chuan, um, as he, how would I describe it, plies his trade amongst the glitz, glamour and corruption of 1990s Mumbai. Um, so what I really like about this text actually is one of the things I really like about BJ is that he'd just give it a go. He's like, all right, he's not done crime fiction before, but um, he studied it, he looked at the craft uh, and then he worked out how to do the novel. So. It's, as such, it's very Chandra-esque and it's a, a, a really good read, something that's really quite compelling. Um, so that's uh, The Missing Husband. Vijay will tell you a little bit more about that um, later on because he's following with, uh, I think, his, um, his book trailer and uh, he'll be doing a, a short reading from it as well. So the next uh, book I have here is A House With No Angels by Mulia Maye. Um, so in terms of the, the book, as a very, very brief overview, it uh, follows three generations of a Manchester family as they make preparations to uh, attend a funeral. Um, so this is an Anglo-Nigerian family. Uh, and as part of this, uh, a lot of the, the conflicts and uh, submerged tensions of the family uh, are revealed and uh, worked through. Um, and I guess what I like most about this text really is that it's, um, well, first of all, it's uh, Mully's debut novel. It's very delicately crafted. Um, she spent a lot of time uh, working out the best way to um, reveal her characters as we were, as we have taken uh, through the text. Um, but I think the, the thing that really stands out for me is that there is very little literature um, that really looks at the lingering effects of the colonial experience, which is what this one of the things that this text does. Uh, it's particularly interested in uh, the way that that impacts on intergenerational conflict and on mental health. Um, these are things that often aren't talked about. Well, not talked about in uh, publishing or literature, I should say, um, though obviously they're very present within the community. Um, so yeah, if, uh, if you're interested in those things, then uh, I really would recommend that you, you read A House With No Angels. So, uh, and then finally, the uh, last text we have is a collection of poetry by a writer called Fuku de Perro. Uh, it's called, you can't see it very well, I'm trying to get it right, angle right on the camera. Um, uh, Flowers Like Blue Glass. So what it is, is a collection of, um, uh, I guess you, what you would call duo, duolingual poetry i it's written in japanese and english i'm not sure if you can see that um, but uh what we have is a 
Japanese poem and then an English version of it. It's not really a translation. Um, sometimes it is, sometimes it is a translation. Sometimes it is uh, a version of the poem which says in English uh, what the spirit of the Japanese poem is. And sometimes it veers away a little bit from it. Um, but in terms of the, uh, the collection itself, I don't think, in my view, there isn't really anything like it that's been uh, published or currently available. Um, and what I, the thing I really like about it is that the way it plays with meaning constantly, not just meaning across translation. I don't read Japanese. I helped um, do the editing for it. Um, but it's always a conversation. The English version of the poem is a conversation with meaning. Um, and if you understand the Japanese, the Japanese to the English is a conversation about meaning. Um, the other thing I really like about it is the fact that it's really interested in space. So Fukuda Piro uh, himself is an anthropologist and a uh, filmmaker. Um, and I think you can really tell that from the way that the, uh, the poem arrives on the page might be the best way of describing it. So just to show you that the, um, yeah, how do you get it <laughs> right? Which way? But yeah, um, it's the, the space is an important part of what the poem is and how the poem sits on the page or poetry sits on the page. Um, so if you're interested in those kind of things, I really can't recommend it enough uh, as a text of, uh, well, I guess kind of purist poetry. So, okay, that's everything from me. And um, yeah, um, hope you enjoy the rest of the uh, book fair. Thank you.